Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to discuss the system design of the application that we are going to make in this whole series. So if you can see on the screen, we will have a backend system first. So this is our backend application. Now the idea is that the user will be interacting with this backend application. So I will just shift it a bit to the left. Now, as all backends, our application would have a database. So let's say that this is the Postgres database. So before explaining all of this, I would like to explain what the application is all about. So let's say that this is a system where the users will post some blogs. So a user will interact with the backend system and they will post a blog. The blog would be saved to the database, the Postgres database. Now this blog will have some metadata so a blog will have some metadata like name of the blog, date posted, the user who posted this, etc. Also, also the blog would have some tags. So a blog can have multiple tags. So this blog, the user will interact with the backend system. They will post this blog. The blog would be saved to the database. Now we also want this blog to be easily searchable. So let's say that the blog is about Golang and we have various keywords in the blog. And if the user types some keywords, they should be able to search the blog. So for that, we will have another database, a NoSQL database in fact, and it would be nothing but Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch is a simple NoSQL database that is optimized for searching. So the idea is that when the data is saved to the Postgres database, it will be synced to Elasticsearch. And now the user can fetch the data from Elasticsearch. So when the user searches for a data, let's say that they search for a keyword in a blog, Let's say, for example, our blog is on Golang. So let's say that we have an example blog. The blog is titled Golang is awesome. And the content is that Golang is a programming language developed by Google. So let's say that if the user searches for the keyword language, they should be able to fetch this blog. So the whole metadata of the blog along with its content should be saved in Elasticsearch. Generally, we use Elasticsearch as a database which is optimized for searching. So generally we use it for read only mostly where we fire queries and get the results back. But the idea is that the whole application is saved to Postgres database, which is our single source of truth. The data is then synced to Elasticsearch. So this is some kind of a sync operation. So simply put, the user comes and uses the application. They post a blog, the blog is saved to Postgres. It is synced to Elasticsearch. And when they search for certain keywords, the data is fetched from Elasticsearch. search for keywords. So the data is fetched from Elasticsearch in this case. You know, the, we cannot use Postgres for these kinds of things because if we use Postgres, we would be firing queries like, in fact, literally we would be firing like queries and these queries are very, very costly. You cannot do a text search on a data which is saved in Postgres database. 
you need to use Elasticsearch for that. So whatever data is saved to Postgres will be synced to Elasticsearch and we would be searching that. So this is a simple application. Let's also discuss the schema here. So the schema is not very complex. We would be having a table called blogs, which will store name of the blog. Obviously any table has a primary key, which is the ID. Also, it will store name of the blog, content of the blog. I think that should be it. Obviously some other fields like created at, updated at, etc. Now, apart from this, we will store another field called deleted at. So what happens in Postgres is that when a certain data is deleted, it is actually soft deleted. We cannot hard delete a data. In fact, we can, but the problem is that the whole table is revamped again. The whole table changes again, which is a costly operation in production. So instead of deleting, hard deleting the data, we just mark it as deleted and we don't remove it from the database. When we fire queries on Postgres, that data is not fetched because the deleted at field is true. So that data is not fetched. Now we have a table called blog. So this is our first table. And obviously we would need another table called user to store the user info. Again, the, it would have a primary key called ID. Let's say that the user has a name called username. The user has a name called username. It has a primary field ID and other fields like created at, updated at, and deleted at. Now we have blog, we have users, we have another table called tag. Tag will again store the ID of the tag and the name of the tag. Now we know, know that there is a blog table, there is a user table. We somehow want to link the blog table with the user table. So there would be blog user table, which will simply store the user ID and the blog ID. It simply means that this user has written this blog. So this is just a relationship mapping, which we are keeping in this blog user table. We have another table called blog tag. So this will have blog ID and tag ID, which is again, blog ID is the primary key of the blog table. Tag ID is the primary key of the tag table. So this is a mapping between blog and the tags. Now we have blog user and blog tag. I think this should be enough for now. So we have the blog table where we store all the blogs. We have the user table, the users who are registered with us and the tag table, which are certain tags that are linked to a blog. So the user uh, interacts with the backend, they sign up maybe, and we won't be diving deeply into a proper sign up system, or I think we will, but towards the end. But for now, the user will sign up with the backend. It would be a simple sign up. They will save their username, password, and yeah. Uh, then they would write some blogs. The blog would be saved to Postgres database, which would be synced to Elasticsearch, on which we can fire search queries with a certain keyword. And this is the schema of the Postgres database. And we would be using the same schema in the Elasticsearch database. I don't think we need to store these relationship mapping in Elasticsearch. Maybe the, maybe only these three tables should do the trick because these relations can be fetched from Postgres and the query would be fast enough since uh, Postgres is indexed on the blog user table would be indexed on user ID and blog ID and similarly blog tag would be indexed on blog ID and tag ID both. So that query would be pretty fast and yeah, these are the only things that we need in uh, Elasticsearch. In fact, we don't even need these two in the beginning. I guess only the blog should do the trick. So this is it. If you like this video, then consider subscribing to the channel. 
As an experienced blockchain developer and a FANG engineer, I know the topics required to actually understand core distributed systems. In the future, I will be making more such no-nonsense videos on programming, DevOps, system design, and of course, my favorite topic, blockchain. Have a nice day and I hope to see you back in the next one.